A few years ago, as a college student, I was working part-time as night clerk at a small clinic through an introduction by a senior student. My duties included making rounds and answering the phone. The rest of the time I was free to do whatever I wanted. Security sensors cover most of the first and second floors but not the duty room, so I can move freely within the duty room. The control panel has a lamp, which is green when there is no abnormality. When a sensor detects something, the lamp turns red, and the security company and the director in charge are notified. If a door or window is opened, an alarm sounds. Once you get to your room and switch to security mode, you can do whatever you want as long as you don't get a phone call. I would only get a phone call in the middle of the night once a year or so. See I was always watching TV, studying, or doing whatever I wanted. One night, I made my rounds as usual, went into my room, turned on security mode, and just chilled out. I watched a drama, ate a bento I bought at a convenience store, read a book, and slumped down with my elbows on my pillows. The TV had just finished the program and was about to go to commercials. I casually glanced at the control panel and couldn't believe my eyes. The light was red. The light had never been red before. What? Why? I looked at the panel and saw that the red light was off and the green light was on. There is no way that there is anyone in the clinic, if you think about it. If a director or a doctor came to the clinic on urgent business, he or she would first disarm the security company from outside the back entrance. Also, if it were an intruder from the outside, the alarm should have sounded the moment a window or door was opened. It was a malfunction. That's what I decided. If the red light really came on, the warden and the security company should have been notified, and a call should have been made to this duty room. The fact that there was no such call meant that it was a malfunction. I couldn't take my eyes off the panel, even as I thought this. The green light came on reassuringly, but the next moment, I froze again. The red light came on again. This time it wouldn't go off. Someone, something, is in the clinic. I became obsessed with the paranoia that something I didn't understand was gradually making its way to this duty room. I hurriedly searched for my cell phone and called the director. A few calls later, the warden picked up. The warden said, what's wrong? I said, the light. The red light is on. Warden, really? I haven't heard anything from you. I, but it's still on, and it went out right away earlier, but this time it's on all the time. Warden, okay, I'll check with the security company. I'll check with the security company, so please stand by for a while. I'll call you later. I was a little relieved to hear the warden's voice, but the red light was still on, and I could not shake off my fear. About two minutes later, I received a call back from the warden. The warden said, I checked with the security company, and they said there was nothing unusual reported. I said, no way because the red light is actually on. What should I do? The office said, All right. If it's a malfunction, I'll have to have it looked at and I'm on my way. Wait for me. What a dependable manager. I was impressed. The red light was still on, but I didn't hear any noise or sense any presence. I thought to myself, what's the point of having a part-time job if I have to call the warden just because the red light comes on? After a while, I heard the sound of a car and then I heard footsteps walking downstairs in the clinic. From the third floor window, I could not see the front and back entrances themselves, but I could look down the walled path leading from the front to the back. When I look, I see the warden heading toward the back entrance with the lights gleaming. A few seconds after I followed the warden with my eyes until I could no longer see him. The power to the security company went off with a sound. The warden deactivated the security mode from outside the back entrance. I opened the sliding door and went out into the hallway, eager to join the warden as soon as possible. The moment I stepped out into the hallway, I felt a strange sensation. I was convinced that it was not the warden on the first floor. My head was in turmoil, and cold sweat was pouring out of my body. But I couldn't take my eyes off the first floor. The fishy smell grew stronger, and the mm. song grew louder. Something is definitely heading toward the stairs. 
I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. My head is frantically ordering me to run away, but my body is not moving at all. Finally, he appeared. He was almost two meters tall, and his entire body was skin-colored, or almost white. He had no hair, his arms and legs were abnormally long, and he moved slowly as if he were dancing, moving all the joints of his body. It's coming this way. We have to run. I have to run. I thought but I couldn't move my body. When he was about halfway up the stairs from the first floor to the second floor, my cell phone, which I had left in the dormitory room, rang. I thought, oh no, but it was too late. He stopped moving for a moment, then moved every joint in his body and turned his whole body toward me. Our eyes met. I could see the cloudy eyeballs moving in his eyes. He twitched his mouth and made a <laughs> sound. It looked like he was smiling eerily. The next thing I knew, he was looking at me and started to walk up the stairs with a great speed. I was able to move as if I had been knocked off my feet. However, there was nowhere to run. I ran into the dorm room anyway, closed the sliding door, and held him down. After a while, I heard a song of <laughs> coming from the stairs and the fresh smell became more and more intense. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I cried and held down the sliding door. I was going crazy. He was already on the other side of the sliding door. Something hit the top of the sliding door. I could see his smooth head hitting the sliding door in my mind. This time, it was around my waist. It was his knee. Stop it. I screamed as hard as I could. I could say that I cried out. Then, the impact suddenly stopped. I could no longer hear the <coughs> song. I sat down and backed away from the sliding door without taking my eyes off it. I backed up to the wall behind me and stood up, relying on the wall. There was a window. The impact had ceased and I could no longer hear the singing, but I was sure he was right behind the sliding door. The fishy smell was even stronger than before. Somehow I knew for sure that he was going to smash through the sliding door with the next impact. I glared at the sliding door and opened the window with my back hand. I leapt out of the window almost simultaneously with the sound of the sliding door being torn down. As I fell through the window, I looked toward the room and saw his big, twisted mouth right in front of my eyes and nose. When I came to, I was in the hospital. I had broken both my arms and legs, my skull was cracked, and I was on the verge of death. My family was very happy to see me, but I noticed that the nurse in charge of my case was acting strangely. She seemed to be afraid of me. When I was transferred to the hospital, I would not be fully discharged until later, I asked the nurse about it. The nurse said, because you were injured. She said, because you had been groaning with a bad injury for a long time, but late at night you open your eyes, open your mouth, and sing a song happily. Mm.